good morning. And welcome back. I believe I had just uh, wandered back out to the demon ruins here. After we had uh, cut off the session last time. Somewhere near the newly darkened on Orlando. Back out here trying to see if I can collect these last few uh, straggler items without uh, getting myself killed. Let's see if that's possible. Likely no. Likely I will be getting killed. It's really kind of funny that they take the first boss of the game and they give you a whole arena full of them. You have to say, look how far you've come. Or, as if to say, die. One of those two. Good morning. Welcome back. And welcome to the weekend, I hope. Ah, oh, that was too far. Now it's going to get complicated. That didn't work. <laughs> well, sure. Get out all your angst, that's fair. That's it. Just a little lava. tiniest amount of lava to turn the tide. Oh. There's a the bit of lava to turn the tide. If I've ever seen one. Okay. So the three on one, not, uh, not good. Hello, and welcome. I'm so glad you found me whilst tidying. And I'm so sorry you've woken up an hour earlier than you were supposed to. Go back to bed, you! You go get your beauty sleep. No, I'm not your... I don't know... Mother Superior? I don't know who that was supposed to be exactly. The other thing I'm assuming is that they respawn, but I can't really tell. There's so many of them. In my mind, there's there's more than that. There's more than five. But I don't know if that's the case. Let's see if I can get just one of these guys this time. There we go. That should help us significantly. Who's next? Come on now, demons. Let's keep this orderly. Freshly resubscribed, why well, thank you. I appreciate that immensely. And with chocolate chip pancakes, my goodness. A calico cat on your right, a pug on your left. 
a a sun conure? Is that a a type of bird, perhaps? I am I am ignorant of such things, but it sounds lovely, and it's named Moss Eisley. I couldn't pick a better name myself. And that's it. That's the entire performance. A very chatty bird. Good. That is so lovely. And sounds like the perfect way to spend a weekend. Down, boy. You've had your turn. Now, now settle it. Settle it on down to death. All right, how about you? How about it? Let's hear it. What's your excuse? You taught him how to say scum and villainy. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, I missed. He didn't. He did not miss. Okay. There we go. Let's take a sip. Hello and welcome. Welcome to it live. Though that makes it sound suddenly sinister or saucy, which is not my intention. Welcome, welcome. It's never my intention to be sinister or saucy. Wink, wink. I mean, threat, threatening wink? I don't even know what that would look like. A threatening wink. Arr. It's weird. It's weird to try to imagine it. Alright, I think I'm safe. I am wearing an orange charred ring. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's not going to be enough. <laughs> maybe I need to take a running start. Let's try this. Huh? Well, you'd think that would do it. You'd think that would be enough uh, upward thrust. But once again, I never do anything sinister or saucy, so there's no upward thrust for me. Come on now. I really don't want to have to drop down from the upper level. That seems like madness. Is that the only way, though? Because... Boo. Boo to that idea. Oh, goodness. I'm glad that I'm more effective at murdery than you may have assumed. I, I will take that as a compliment. Hmm. So I am genuinely not sure what the, uh, ah ha ha ha. I am finally sure what the correct way up here is. And it's a soul. Of course. Of course it would be. Not a rare sword or some sort of ancient and powerful enchanted armor. Definitely not any sort of magical ring. Or a cloak that would turn me invisible to my enemies. No, sure. Just a soul. That's great. I'm really pleased about it. <laughs> Truly, I'm grateful. That's fine. And I think that must be all of the items. Ooh, it looks like somebody dropped something over here. And I didn't even notice. Very, uh... Inattentive janitor out here in the demon ruins. Oh, lovely. There's one thing you can say about those Taurus demons. It's that they have a great axe. So let's get back up here, skirt up to the bonfire. I'm hoping that's just about all of the items around here in this area. This is where we previously fought the ceaseless discharge, who was making all of the magma that was flooding this area. I was doing a little bit of reading into the uh, the backstory of the demon ruins, and lost Isolith in the tragedy that occurred here, which is uh, 
Quite unfortunate. Though it takes a t it takes a bit of a runway to explain. <laughs> I'm trying to think how to get there. We had briefly touched uh, yesterday during a previous session on the sort of origins of the world, the first flame and the disparity that it created, the difference between life and death and dark and light that suddenly sprang into existence. And then how they, the creatures that resulted from that uh, event began to take over the surface world with the new power of flame and the power of lightning and began to take the surface world back from the dragons who had existed forever and then once uh, having conquered the dragons on the surface world the age of light, the age of flame began which was a, a glorious age of peace and prosperity though not really peace some prosperity and uh, then of course, the cycle is that the flame will fade. The flame will uh, eventually die, and darkness will return, and everything will come back to one single state of commingled nothingness. And so, Lost Isolith is actually, we come upon it sort of late in the sequence. Um, the entire cycle of flame had already begun to fade. And the witch of Isolith was one of the first... I don't know if she was a giant. Uh, she was a physical being, one of the first physical beings to possess a lord soul. She possessed the soul of fire, I believe, as opposed to the soul of light. And so when the flame began to fade, when the light began to fade from the world, she attempted to use her sorcery, the pyromancy that she learned from the soul of flame, to create sort of a false soul, a false source of fuel that would burn forever and ever in this, uh, this kiln down here, effectively. However, she failed to uh, create this soul, or such a thing is not possible in the laws of the universe, and all of this, uh, this madness spewed forth, all of the demons that we have seen, the Taurus, the uh, Capra demons, the demon statuaries, and most of the demon bosses we have faced so far, all sprang into existence because of an accident or an experiment where they attempted to use a synthetic flame soul to relight the, the kiln. And so everything we, we deal with, even the demons on the surface, sprang out during that event. I don't know why I'm rambling about it and not showing you any action whatsoever. But there you have it. There's the whole backstory. So sorry. Let me catch up to the chat here. How have I been doing? I'm okay. How are you? It's lovely to see you here. I'm glad you're, uh, you're spending your time with me. And the death that is sure to follow. Let me see here. I want to head to likely the Sanctuary... Let's head back to the past. Into the, uh, the long dead city of Ulasil. I do have a couple of souls on the line. I wonder if I can buy anything from Elizabeth here. Struggling, are we? If there's anything I can do, oh, I you know me. To ask. I'm always struggling. Don't worry about that. Okay, I already have this catalyst. Should be fine. And thee? If it's not inappropriate to say, as a flammable sentient object. I mean, I suppose I am too, technically. Just You seem slightly more flammable if it's not insulting. But yes, the flame shall guide me, I'm sure. Okay, let's see if we can meet our friend uh, Artorius in something resembling combat. Okay, but where did the mushroom people come from? This is a good question. And I'm not sure if I have an answer to it. Let's see, usually you can only find out about something if it has like an item 
related to it. Because the lore of the game is all, like, locked into these item descriptions. Everything kind of just gives you a line or two. But let's see if I can find out. Just a moment. I'm bringing up my old, uh, my old guide here. Mm-hmm. Well, it says nothing about their origins. I know that they're found in the Dark Root Garden, but only very slightly. There's only like one little family of them in the Dark Root Garden. And then the rest of them are all hiding in the Great Hollow, which is one of the last remaining arch trees. It's one of the trees that existed in the primordial age, the age of ancients, um, when the dragons immortally ruled the nothingness. The nothingness slash arch trees. And so I wonder if they're some way related to that, if they're some way related to dragons, if they are that old, or if they just kind of settled into the arch trees after the fact. I would assume they don't have anything to do with the demon uh, explosion at Isolith, whatever we should call that. Excuse me, sir. I don't want any of your hammer time, thank you. Because I don't, uh, I don't think they're chaos-based. They may be another kind of magical creature or a magical experiment. Part of the fun thing about Dark Souls is that a lot of the lore is hidden. And even when you find it, a lot of it is so vague that it kind of allows you to speculate on what the reality of the situation might be. So in one way, we get to decide what the origin of the Mushroom People is. But, uh, I wish we had definitive answers. Let me scroll back up momentarily, so sorry. If I strike down one of the people with egg sacks on their back, back in the, uh, the demon ruins there, do baby spiders spill out? I believe that there is a secret. I don't I don't think it's a uh, quite a a spider piñata as I'm now envisioning <laughs> if I can use my mouth correctly. But there is something weird that can happen with those egg sack guys. I don't know if it's related to the chaos servant covenant or what. Um but they they hang around the fair lady, the uh, the last remaining spider demon of Isolith, and I believe they're, they kind of try to grow those eggs on their back because they contain a small amount of humanity. It's like they're trying to farm humanity to offer it to the fair lady, which soothes her, her pain because she used a spell to suck the poison out of the citizens of Blight Town or something like that a long time ago. So she is suffering immeasurably and humanity can slightly soothe her wounds. And so I believe she is uh, being fed by the egg gentlemen around her who are just trying to act as hosts. Um, but there is something weird that can happen. I forget what you have to do exactly. It's like if you get close to one of those ones that crawl towards you, there's two out of the whole group that crawl slowly towards you, which is very, very creepy. And I believe if they actually get close enough, they can, like, spit an egg onto your head, and it burrows in, and it becomes a permanent part of your head. You can then, like, ask for absolution or something from the fair lady or from Ainagi or whatever, his her butler there. You can have it removed, or you can use, like, a, an item to distract it so that it disconnects from your head. But weirdly... Like, it'll start... It feeds off your health, or it feeds off your souls. I, I can't quite remember. It takes a little bit of something from you, like an agent. <laughs> Take 10% of something. And it slowly grows, and you can actually unlock secret moves or secret spells that come out of the egg if you get it to certain, like, evolutions. And I have never even tried that. I've barely even heard of it. But apparently it does exist. Much like this guy, 
who does exist, who I just can't help staring at every time we pass by. And uh, I have not actually gotten the chance to play Bloodborne. I don't have a PlayStation, regrettably. Oh, Spider-Man, how I miss thee. And uh, so I haven't played Bloodborne, but this this whole Ula Seal downloadable section, the Royal Wood, if you're not aware, takes place in the past. It takes place, like, during the previous cycle, when the kingdom of Ula Seal was on the way down, effectively. And you uh, got sucked into the past by this hand of darkness, this abyssal hand coming through a portal that brought you back in time here to uh, Ula Seal, back when it still existed. And this guy says that that happened to him, too. You're the only two people from the future back here. And so I find it interesting that he could be from further in the future than I am. It doesn't matter when he's from, necessarily. He could be from, like, Bloodborne, or the Bloodborne era of the Souls cycle. And I just think that's fascinating that he might actually be from a industrial age that I have not yet reached. Anyway, there's enough speculation. I don't really need this orange charred ring anymore. Let's see if there's something else that will help us. Oh boy, what could possibly help us against Artorias? I just don't know. I'm sure he must be weak to something. But in the entire game, if there's any single boss who's weak to nothing, it would probably be Artorias. I'm just going to get a tiny boost versus physical attacks. Let's see if that helps me. Not sure that it will, but sure. All right. Let's see what we're in for. 45,000 on the line. Absolutely. If I could dress like Marvelous Chester there across the bridge every day, I would. If I had the top hats for it. If only I had the waistcoats. So this is what has become of the great hero great hero of legend, Artorius the Abyss Walker. You have been told all this time, the entire game up to now, effectively, that he uh, succeeded in stopping the darkness that was trying to overtake Ulysseel. But that's not true. He's been stuck here. And he is quick. Or I am slow, perhaps. Ah, every time. <laughs> Missing like crazy. Ah. How I would love not to miss. Come on, Artorius. Let's be kind now. Let's be kind and just die. So that is the truth of what became of the Abyss Walker. I regret to inform you. He did not even make it into uh, Ula Seal. Or if he did, he decided to instead take up a position to defend it or keep others out. We 
Should now be able to get uh, further into the city. Just making sure I'm not missing any items on the ground. So you can see the remnants of the abyss, or the, the spread of the abyss, beginning to uh, make its mark here. Uh, another immediate fog wall. That's interesting. I'll grab this bonfire first. Unless this is a horrible trap. I dearly hope it is not. Do I know of Georgetown, Colorado? Yes, I believe so. Um... It's definitely ringing a bell, at least. Like, I think I, w I went there when I was uh, a child many years ago. At least two, two years ago. But I was dragged around a lot as a child, so it it's hard to tell. By my ears? No, by my ears. They just elected a cat as mayor? That's fantastic. Long live the king! <laughs> I wonder what will uh, what will become of their their tax system under such a, a despot. I can't wait to find out. Okay. I can hear a little scratching, like a like a whittling sound. Beyond that door. Wonder if someone needs rescuing. I have uh, never actually played this part of things here. This is my first time through this whole environment. I think I have made it as far as Artorias on a previous playthrough, but it was like I was playing to get myself excited because Dark Souls 2 was coming out, and then Dark Souls 2 came out, like just as I reached Artorias, and I was I was gone on the next thing. And I, I neglected to ever come back and actually finish Ulaseel, which is a crime unto itself. The cat's name is Parker. That's hilarious. I used to live in a town called Parker. So it's all coming together. I think I am this cat in some sense. This cat is me. We are connected. Was there one path I missed? Yeah, I didn't go in this fog wall yet. That was silly of me. Enter the gazebo. I have never heard that prompt before. Ah, it was a dog. I'm sorry. It was a dog named Parker. I'm sure he will still find a way to rule with an iron paw. That's weird. I got a coward's crystal? What does this mean? Let's try to find it. There we go. Exit Battle of Stoicism. In the name of a warrior's honor, do not quickly resort to use this crystal. I don't know what the Battle of Stoicism is. Maybe it's some sort of, like, multiplayer tournament thing? Some various arenas pictured here. Ah, these are like selectable. Deathmatch in the ruins, deathmatch on the dais. Okay, I think I understand. And uh, good, good for you guys. You enjoy. I am not necessarily interested in... Uh, online competition. That's the sort of thing that will leave me hollow. Shockingly enough, 95,000 souls is not enough to level up at this point. I've been grinding out the, the phalanx too heavily. So this is a new enemy type for me. We saw one of them back 
in the Artorius arena appears to be some sort of mutated hollow or something. A, a mutated goblin creature with a clear head for accounting, I would say. No punching. Let's stop it with the punching now. So I don't know what happened to these folks, exactly. Nothing good, it seems. Now just to mention it, I think Ulysseel in this DLC kind of stands apart from the rest. In the sense that uh, you're essentially... I don't know how to describe it exactly. This kingdom isn't falling into darkness in the same way that uh, the other one is. Usually the darkness is just a fading of the flame. It's sort of a natural end times. It's a thing that's supposed to happen. But this darkness, I think, is similar to the demon ruins. They tried a ritual or an experiment of some sort. They tried to get a primeval human, I believe it was in fact the first furtive pygmy, he was called, the human who found the dark soul of humanity inside the first flame. They tried to bring him back, thinking that he would be able to tell them how to use it, or he would be able to use it to create this kingdom of man, an age of man, that would exist in darkness. And uh, something went wrong, and the darkness mutated, like the light, like the first flame that mutated in the, uh, the Witch of Isolith's kiln. The darkness mutated here, and became something very, very different from what it was supposed to be originally. So this is a very interesting town, if I'm understanding things correctly. We are sort of searching out the source of this false darkness, this abomination of darkness. Well, there's another new enemy type. And he's laughing at me. That hurts my feelings. And I keep hearing footsteps all around, and it's, it's not helping. It's not helping my humors. Furtive Pygmy is a pretty great name, yeah. Probably start a pretty good band. We are Furtive Pygmy! Be fantastic. Here's all the whispery footsteps I've been hearing. What is that? Just a plant? Or some sort of angry hedgehog? Never can be sure. And they're gonna hit you with an angry hedgehog. Oh, we are walking through the ruins of Ula Seal, and I don't know what we are about to find here. I hope it's not death, but I'm pretty sure that it will be. Okay. There's a crystal lizard there. Wow. Something banging. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that exactly. Let's see if this guy is chasing me first, though. I guess he would have to jump down, so never mind. I thought these stairs were connected. There we go, he jumped down. Alright, let's peek in here. So close. You do appear to have invented... oh goodness. I appear to have invented some new kind of dark sorcery that I have never seen before, too. 
It's not a traditional uh, spell class. That is a very good question. It uh, it kind of depends. Let me repeat the question for the group here. Is each new Souls game connected like a new age of man in the same timeline? It is, yes. The cycle continues in the next games and additional information about the cycle becomes available in the next games. Um, but I think there's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure aspect to it. Because you effectively have two... Oh, goodness, I was hoping there'd be a, a more of a ledge to hide behind here. There's not much of one. At the end of the game here... No. Oh. <laughs> There's 102,000 souls lying on a small plank out there. Oh, not the button I wanted to press. So at the end of the game, you have to make a decision, effectively. You, this whole time you've been asked to light the first flame, you know, become powerful enough, contain enough souls inside your meager body that you can burn forever and ever in glorious light and continue the Age of Fire. That is the kind of canonical ending most everyone gets the first time through, I would imagine. Please stop laughing and pointing at me, it's really beginning to sting. So the other way you can uh, choose to go is you can walk away from it. You can say you're not going to light the first flame, you're not going to burn forever in sentient agony, and you're just going to see what happens next. You're going to let the flame die, and man, the dark soul of humanity, will come back into play. It will be your time. But nobody knows what that has looked like, because the gods, quote-unquote, have prevented it for a thousand years. They have kept the Age of Fire going, specifically so that the Age of Man, the Age of Dark, would never come to be. So you can choose to walk away from it. And then uh, in Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2 starts in a new kingdom called Dranglaic, and uh, supposedly on a new cycle you can also kind of consider it to be that the canonical ending of Dark Souls is that you walked away from the fire and tried to begin an Age of Darkness, and that is effectively how you will find the Kingdom of Dranglaic in Dark Souls 2. They, they've kind of done that. They've walked away from it, and they're waiting to die in a certain sense. And so you could consider that you are the king of Dark Souls 2, who decided to walk away from the fire, basically. Um, the other way to think of it is that, yes, you lit the flame. If that's your canonical ending, you lit the flame and you burned for another thousand years, say. Then it will fade. That's that's the, the only thing that can happen, regrettably, in this world. The uh, flame will fade a thousand years from now, or uh, unless someone tries another ritual or experiment, perhaps a few hundred years more. And then maybe a new king came along and he decided to, to let it fall into darkness too. So it's basically how long between Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 was there. You know, how many hundreds of years is there between the first and second game in your mind based on the decisions you made. It's really kind of an interesting set up, but you, you do have to do a little of your own homework. So I'm trying to think if I can just jump down. Yeah, there's the plank and my souls. Not have to go through the, the nastiness immediately. And then try to roll on past them. Because that is really, uh, really a devastating spell. I could also go into a shield for a moment. I don't need to be single-handing this. This will probably help. Having any shield. Okay. Now we're clear in here. Absolutely. Uh, please copy off my lore homework and expand on it is the entire point, in my opinion. 
I definitely don't have a full grasp of everything. Aha, there is the, potentially the spell in question that we have been getting pummeled with. Yeah, it is kind of similar to the old uh, Legacy of Cain. I used to love those. That series. So this idea of a world fading, a world on the way out, and what are your feelings towards it? <laughs> Do you like the world? Do you want to preserve the world? Do you think that there is nobility? And humanity and, and sacrifice and honor and love enough in the world that it is worth fighting for? Or do you want to see what nature has in store for us? What, what may be coming next? I think it's a very, very fascinating concept. Peaky peaky. Okay, I guess we're going back down. We could probably skirt across to the stairs there, but I'm wondering if there's like a proper... proper path, and I don't know what is banging here. Huh. You know, the only thing I can think of, this message says, let there be light. Um, it's probably like a player hint. The only thing I can even think of is... Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I read something a long, long time ago that this skull lantern you find in the catacombs is somehow connected to Ulysseel. And I've never known if that was true. I've never gotten this far in the, the DLC. Went right past it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I was never far enough up. Is it not a weapon? Jeez. I thought I still had it in my inventory. That's weird. Maybe I put it in my bottomless box for some reason. I can't imagine why. And I can't get back up there. Okay, so we're going to have to try to skirt around to the bonfire, or to a new bonfire. Apparently. Let's see what's up here. Just briefly. Ah, that may be the way back up. Ah, it's a mimic. You can see it breathing. I've still got some of these. I should really pick up more of these. Because that is nasty. Nasty jazz. Let's see if I can infect. There we go. So hopefully the Skull Lantern is in my bottomless box, which is just too much fun to say. I will continue. Whoa, that guy just tumbled. Goodbye. Interesting. Regrettably, accessing my box <laughs> will uh, bring everyone back to life. But I do have 113,000 souls now, so two birds. At the same time, two birds. Let's see if I made a silly decision to put this away. Because I thought it was just a weapon. I thought it had like a fireball thing.
I could have scrolled the other way. There we go. Here it is. Back in my hand now. My greedy little hand. And let's see if I'm totally not remembering correctly here. So close. All right. So sorry, trying to keep up with the chat here. Make sure I'm not missing any of that hot, hot goss. Who's got the deets? Who's got the scoop, the poop, the skinny? Lay it on me. Oh, interesting. Is that a helmet or? Yes. Bloated head is fissured, the cracks lined with innumerable tiny red eyeballs. Mucus filled inside, and no sane person could ever wear it. Man, that freaks me out. <laughs> freaks me out when I get another Estus. For no reason that I can discern. Okay, so I could head back that way, or I could skirt back around. I guess I can't skirt around because I jumped onto that rooftop. That makes sense. Okay, gently. Well, oh, that's a slippery corpse. So I will go this way, because I think I need to. And I forgot to level up. Let's do this again before I get too far. Ahead of myself. So sorry. Neglecting the important things. Like removing my soul. Putting it into my, I don't know, boots? I don't know what you're doing exactly. Oh yeah, rub a little Purell in the bloated head. It'll be fine. It'll take care of the mucus. Oh, that'll take care of the mucus for now, but we will need lots of Purell. <laughs> it's terrible. Just terrible. Oh, that'll take care of the mucus for now. Even though it's stripping down. I'm trying to get all these things, the, the things that are at 35, up to 40. I'm just trying to bring everything up slowly together. Is my only leveling goal at this point. But I, I'm likely fine. I likely don't need to level up anymore. I've probably leveled up too much. I do believe, just so you're aware, if you uh, follow my grindy advice, I, I believe that the ability to summon other NPCs, not NPCs, but player characters, so NPCs you can always summon, it's just based on the story and specific circumstances, players need to be like within ten levels of you or something in order for their summon signs to show up. I forget the exact specifics. So you can grind yourself up to a level where no one will help you, is, is something to note. And then you have to do everything yourself, minus the NPCs. So if you're having trouble with bosses and you, you like to get other players to come in and help you, it may be worth staying at a lower level in order to continue summoning them. But if you want to do everything yourself with a massive greatsword, you can just grind away. That's my advice. Ah, I thought I could roll under it, but I didn't catch it in time. I should really kindle that bonfire, too. I've gotten gotten very used to having uh, massive stores of Estus at this point. So we now have effectively nothing to lose. We do have some soft humanity up there in the left. 
too worth. But uh, hopefully we'll be fine. So let me see here. I guess there's a sorceress in there. And then maybe it's just around the corner or it's down these stairs. I can't recall. Maybe just around this corner. Or we may need to go one more level down. There we go. Huh. I am not sure to make of that. It doesn't even seem to be, like, lit up that I can tell. There we go. You have to defend to light it up. Wow! That is crazy! I've never actually seen that. So it's an illusory wall that can only be opened with the Skull Lantern. And thank you for this message. Whoever left this here, that I would have no idea otherwise. So I guess when we hear that bonging sound, for lack of a better word, that uh, weird sort of clanging, we can whip out the lantern. Out with the dark lantern, as I always say. A silver pendant. What is this? Likely not wearable. There it is. Deflect dark. Interesting. I will be right back here. One second. So sorry. So sorry about that. Ran out of coffee. Had to recaffeinate myself. Ah, goodbye, Quan Di, unless I missed you already. <laughs> My apologies. I hope anyone who may be cycling in or out has a wonderful weekend. Just wonderful. I can't even tell you. Okay. So I think we, uh... We got everything down there. The thing in the chest. Yeah, the dark orb or whatever it was. I'm guessing... That's weird, now that I look at it. I would consider that to be an unjumpable gap. Which makes me wonder if there is a invisible platform. 
Because why else would there be a... another plank on the other side of it? But that means we would have to fight these two sorcerers again. Ah. But I do have my shield. So I won't complain. I won't complain too much. Come on up the stairs. You know you want to visit me. Let's get this going. Aw. Oh, I was hoping they would have been further up the stairs, but no. That was unwise to assume. Okay, I'll come to you. That's fair. It's always interesting to me when they give you chests that have already been opened. Like, I think two of these were open, and then this one had the dark orb. And it always makes me think that they're trying to tell you someone came before you. Or something like that. Or that this is an area that has been looted. Like, there must be a story reason why there are open chests. Jumping back, because Scarab27 has wisely reminded me, as I slowly go Scottish, that I haven't de uh, activated my silver pendant. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if you need to, like, put it in your... Put it in your, um, you know, uh, quick bar or whatever. I don't even know if it's an item like that. Scroll, scroll, I have so many things now, goodness me. Interesting. So I could, like, use it whenever I need it? I'm hoping there isn't <laughs> a cost involved. Is there a cost? Huh. I assume not, so yay. That's fantastic. That's fantastic, depending on if I'm still going or not. It likely should be. <laughs> so that is very strange. And then I... This is what I'm curious about now that we've beat the sorcerers. And thank you for the reminder. My good scarab. My scarab. My colleague. Um, let me try this. Hello? This is very likely just a way to get get you to kill yourself, because it doesn't really look like there's anything in the doorway. Like, it, it kind of looks like a flat texture to me. So I, I won't, uh, I won't go too crazy with it. Very interesting that I can deflect the dark. I wonder when I'm uh, supposed to use that exactly. Since it's uh, included with those sorceresses or whatever, since it's nearby them, I wonder if you can just bounce their dark orbs back to them and if it's like a one-hit kill, if you succeed in doing so. I will have to try it. Get the timing right, I'm sure. And it was in here, right? I'm just trying to make sure there's no lore reason why it would be in here. I can't think of one. Alright, let's continue on. That's enough baseless speculation. So I guess this is the path forward. This is the path back up to the bonfire. Let me just make sure I'm not missing any offshoots. I don't believe so. Yeah, should be fine. Alright, let's continue. Sorry, my, my quantity surveyor, Scarab27. Not a, not a colleague, that's for sure. He's my quantity surveyor. Ah, that's when I should have used the... A dark deflection. Eh? Huh? <laughs> 
Way too late. Way too late to be of any use to anyone. Come on now. Yeah! So it didn't necessarily deflect it back at her. But if you can get it early enough, like just after they throw it. Interesting. Ah. <laughs> So sorry. Let me get back to this. I don't necessarily want to be playing baseball all day. Hmm. Can never quite tell out of the corner of my eye if they have an item or not. Seeing sparkles. Those guys really do become a little more uh, intimidating when it gets dark and their red eyes begin to glow quite sinister. So there's a whole room full of abyss goo. Abyssal phlegm, whatever we're calling it. And no thank you. No thank you to all of it. I was too happy about it. Too happy thinking he would walk right into the archway and that that would look impressive and he would die. But then I just made a fool of myself. Instead. Instead of that. More rubbish. Yay. It's just what I wanted. Ah, hello. Yes? Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait until you're ready. Okay, so there's a whole lot of abyss down there. It's not looking good. Not looking good for my ankles. It's so much teeheeing. Is this where they got it? Is this where the merchants of Lordran learned their craft? So there's one spellcaster, likely more hiding, a good half dozen of our cackling jackals. Ah, oh. not close enough. Oh, there's a new spell. This is a really good crowd. If you have some new stand-up material you need to work through, they are they are hot out there. Go ahead, give it a try. They'll laugh at anything, literally anything. Oh, there's the other spellcaster. I knew there had to be more. Is this going to be slippery, is my question, and my fear. I have a fear of slippery. chorus of cackling from all around is beginning to make me feel quite mad. Yikes. I <sighs> should have angled myself. Oh, if only I had angled myself. Have a wonderful sleep. Thank you for catching me. I appreciate your time. Okay, back to the top. 
I have never gotten to play Bloodborne. Hollywood Crown is saying that Ulysse Eel <laughs> here is reminding uh, you of Bloodborne. I have not gotten to explore that yet. Is this a similar architecture and style? Really need to get on that Bloodborne. And that Spider-Man! Darn it all! Here I am, stuck to the ground, not even swinging above the city with my various webs and strings. Like a fool. Like an absolute fool. It is very fun to say, Ula Seal. Ooh, Lassil. Oh yeah, just heading on down to Ulasil. It's it's fantastic. Lovely name. I'm also a huge fan of Dranglaic. I don't know why I like saying that so much. Lord Dran is is quite fun, but it, it it's missing sophistication in some way. Oh, yeah. Marvelous Chester and his marvelous fashion sense. He definitely has Bloodborne written all over him. Okay, let's try this again. I have to imagine that these red eyes are like a a sort of symbol of the abyss. Perhaps an extension of Manas in some way. And that that is part of the corruption that's happening to people, is that he might be spreading his view, like trying to turn everyone into a little spy cam. So you might only be fighting Manus this entire time. So there's my 30,000. Got a spellcaster on the other side, one spellcaster down here. They are doing a devastating amount of damage to me. And I am not deflecting with my silver pendant whatsoever. So much giggling. I'm gonna try going up here first, see if this leads to the spellcaster some way, somehow. And we'll deal with the traffic jam, I'm sure. Oh, well, here it comes. whole corridor of death. So that does not lead to the spellcaster there. Let's keep going, just in case. I don't know where this is taking me, exactly. Interesting to me that the city is like sunken into this sort of cliffside or crater kind of thing. That might be why it disappeared. <laughs> That's not a word. Might be why it disappeared in the uh, present day from the Dark Root Garden. Okay, so this is where that first guy jumped down. There is a chest over there. And I'm not sure how you would get to it. That may be a makeable gap, but I... I wouldn't count on it. 
Hmm. Let's experiment. Okay. Zwei Hunter. Yes, please. I will happily take that, yes. Und zwei Hunter. Lovely. I wonder if that's trying to tell me that flame enchantments are effective against this set. Ah. There's that banging again. We made it. Nice. Could have done that the whole time, probably. But all right. Hoping we can now get over here, perhaps. Actual lit fireplace. There's a rarity in the Dark Souls world. Seeing this breathe, there it goes. It has breathed. Just didn't wait long enough. Crest key. I wonder if that is to that locked door where we heard somebody carving something or tinkering beyond. I think I hear someone tinkering back there. Okay. Could get down onto a roof. This, I assume, would just jump us back down to where we fought those guys. So it's strange that I can't seem to find where the sorcerer is hiding. I thought they were on an upper level somewhere over here, but I don't know. I could take the elevator down before I make this decision. This is likely where the sorcerer is, in fact. Not elevator, but ladder. I also finally remembered uh, how, to, how to slide down ladders. You just can't be pushing the thumbstick. I'm always pushing the thumbstick. Leo, let's go down, let's go down. No, if you let off of that and hit B, then it works just fine. That is what I've been doing wrong the entire time. Don't push. Okay, so there are a ton of guys down there. I got rid of some of them already. That's, uh... Looks like a noose to me. Sure. So maybe it's not as bad as I'm thinking down here. Let's try it. Ah, still have a sorcerer on that end. That's fine. Take them out just in case. Which leads us here. Oh boy. Well, this just doesn't look good at all. Yes, I did. Uh, thank you very much for checking. I did go back and regrettably fight our dear friend Sif yesterday morning, I believe, to get the Covenant of Artorius.
which I will likely need to equip here soon, as it is getting darker and darker as we head into the abyss. Aha, looks like that's probably the way down, and this is likely the magical elevator back up to the bonfire, which is now active. Oh yes, still deeply in mourning for Sif. It was an experience we just should not have had. Not in my timeline. Okay, so I do... kind of want to kindle this. I somehow got four soft humanity, so I, I should be able to kindle it quite easily, actually. Let's uh, do that real quick. And then run back and see if we can use that crest key before we continue on. That's the other thing I was missing. See if we have any new friends locked away. And oh, that'll be fine. I won't be greedy about it. I'll leave one humanity to give myself a little boost there. Huh. I've never seen that before. Must be some sort of covenant-specific summon sign. Hello? No. Is that not... The soul of the man who fell on this spot? He was a dear friend. I wish to pay proper respect with that soul. Would you be willing to part with it? Hmm. That is a, a big ask for a completely unique soul. That you would need to play the game entirely over again to uh, retrieve. Let me double check what this leads Okay. So you can use his soul to create the Abyss Greatsword if you go back out to Lord Ran and talk to the blacksmith. You can also exchange the soul with the Lord's Blade Siren? Siran? for a dark silver tracer and gold tracer. She will also drop them if killed. It says killing her otherwise has no effect, good or bad, in the game. It doesn't matter because she's not from your time period, apparently. So, hmm, I guess it just depends on if I want the Abyss Greatsword more than I want what appears to be a dagger, or a set of daggers. So it's like if you're a fast character, you could give the soul to her. If you're a Greatsword character, you could keep it. I, it's kind of a shame not to give it to her. Really, but, hmm. Decisions, decisions. I will give it to her. I can always go through and give another one. Maybe unwise, since I can just murder her for them. But I don't care for murdering people. Not unless it's absolutely necessary. And then I take great pleasure in it. Oh, let me tell you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for not being aggressive, at the very least. And uh, do tell the people of the past, of the horrors to come. I beg of you. So he was on the other side. I was thinking he was at the entrance, but that's silly. He should be in this side. So that is the multiplayer arena. This is the way to the door. K 
can you get Chester's outfit if you kill him? Is is that possible? Because that's the one murder I, I would definitely do for that outfit. Oh, goodness. When it comes to fashion, sure, I'll kill a man. I mean, why not? Yes, that is the right key. So I'm hoping this is a good sound and not a bad sound. Oh, it's a giant, like a giant blacksmith guy. And he's carving wood or stone into little shapes. He's just, just sitting up here, zenning out, carving his shapes. This is, this is lovely. This is the existence. Oh, wow, look at the size of that bow. This is the best existence any of us could hope for in this reality, really. Mm, a visitor have we. Thou must be the one who freed Artorius. An old friend he was. Thanks to thee, he left this world with honor intact. And here I am, retired and blind. A little help to thee, Aww. I'm afraid. I'm so sorry that you're tired and blind. Dragons shall never be forgotten. We knights fought valiantly, but for every one of them, we lost three score of our own. Exhilaration, pride, hatred, rage. The dragons teased out our dearest emotions. I will understand one day. With our twilight, old thoughts return in great waves of nostalgia. I, uh, don't know what his story is exactly. Did the townspeople, like, lock him up here? And blind him? I do believe that this is... One of the four original knights of Gwyn, one of the dragon slayers, the uh, the bowman, Hawkeye Goff, or however you say it. Mm. There's very little to be said. What good is a dog with no hands to hunt? But I'm lucky to be alive, I suppose. But there's a there's a dragon in the canyon just below us. I I can give you a hare to hunt, man. I, I promise. Maybe I have to, like, go... Oh, thank you. And you as well. Continue these, these lovely carvings. I think they're special. I love them. So I wonder if I actually, like, go down and face the dragon, or, or wake the dragon, if I could then come back and tell him... It's on. Perhaps. Okay, so I, I am being told by, uh, by Hollywood Crown in the chat that uh, Marvelous Chester's armor is pick upable if you kill him. Fresh on the heels of me saying that I, I disagree with murdering people to get their items. Oh gosh, that, that's... they got me. They've got me with the old monkey's paw here, and I'm gonna have to kill Marvelous Chester. Because I need to wear that. He is, as far as I know, the only merchant back in time here, besides Elizabeth. He's the only one who sells useful items, but you can warp in and out of time, so who cares, really? I'm sorry, Marvelous Chester, I am. I, I take no pleasure in this. I take no pleasure in that because it was useless. I take no pleasure in this also. Oh, it's come to blows, has it? Fine then. I've had enough of you anyway. You win. 
Please. Oh, please. Oh, he is so fantastic. I am very sorry. Everything about you is the coolest. Okay. So that was just flat out wrong. That was the moral no-no we've all been looking for. I am, uh... I'm gonna wear some of that, sure. Snickering top hat. The curse of Chester. So even though I'm wearing a mask, I'm I'm also smiling behind it. Like <laughs> I can't help myself. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how his armor actually stacks up to what I'm currently wearing. It is certainly the coolest looking thing I've come across. Oh goodness me. That's, uh, that's just neat. I really wonder if this is like an early, early Bloodborne tease. If they had this all in mind since the beginning. It's incredibly cool. So I guess I need to go back this way to try to wake the dragon. And I'm hoping I can actually escape afterwards. Someone needs to draw you in this outfit. I would love that, if, if anyone has such an ability. It is so dapper. The dapperest. And I'm digging the whole top hat, sword, and shield aesthetic a lot more than I thought I would, too. Okay, sure. That's fair. Yeah, very good at staggering me with those nipple bites. Every time. So I'm really not sure if it's possible to get back out. I have a very, uh... nice amount of souls, just at the moment. Very clean. Okay, let's just try sliding down there and see what happens. This is likely unwise. But we'll see. Yikes. I'm sure if I go out for those items, it will get, uh, interesting. Also appears to be a chest behind the waterfall out there. I really don't want to get further away from the ladder of escape, either. So this is all, all bad. It, however, does not... there's the dragon. It does not look as though I'm being slowed by that water that I can tell. Okay. Well, that's fair. I'm sure my 66666 down there will be waiting for me when we return. And now we can try talking to the uh, archer, see if he has anything new to say. Now that I have proof that the dragon is down there in the electrical burn marks all over my body. Yes, thank you very much for telling me about the outfit. I would have left him happily in the past, and I would not have been near as dapper as I now am. I really appreciate it. Oh, 
All right, let's see if there's anything new here. I need you to put that bow to use. Black dragon posing me duress? The black dragon is posing me duress, yes. I thought as much. He's called Calamit. Ferocious dragon indeed. Even mighty Anna Londa dared not provoke his ire. I see little good coming from this, but my intent is to persevere to the bitter end. Yes. <laughs> my intent is to persevere till the bitter end. Good, good. What is bravery without a dash of recklessness? After it's cautious bravery. Me, and I owe thee much for thy service to Artorius. Now... Watch and see how Goth hunts dragons. Get out your popcorn. Absolutely. Good luck house hunting. Thank you for the tips. And good luck killing this weekend. <laughs> Bye for now. So what do you have for us, Hawkeye? Sorry, dragon. But we're doing this on the ground now. Yes. A true shot was never loosed. That bat will be grounded for a good spell. The rest is in thine hands. I await good tidings. Ah, I shall bring thee good tidings. Slaying. Knighthood's highest calling. Are you sure that knighthood's highest calling isn't to, like, protect the townsfolk and spread peace and goodwill? Is it definitely dragon slain? Okay. As incredibly handsome as I am right now, I do want some more, uh, armor in play for the dragon himself. We can leave our permanent grin installed. Let's go back down there. I think we should be fine without resting. Give me one second here before I get into danger. I'll be right back. So sorry. I am back. Let's check out this dragon. And see what awaits us now that he is ground-based, but likely still filled with rage and lightning. That is, if I can even survive the dogs. Now there's a fog gate. That is very, very good to know that... I imagine every time you run in there, he will probably just kill you from the air until you go speak to Hawkeye. 
something in my my younger days I would have likely spent a long long time before I figured out which isn't to say that I'm smarter now I just I looked it up I cheated And that's called personal growth. When you learn how to cheat. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Don't take this advice. Okay, Black Dragon Calamite. Please lock on. There we go. Yikes. Okay. He has telekinesis, apparently. Or some form of soul binding? Okay. Just keep sipping, that's fine. Ring. Sounds like quite a calamity. Receive double damage. Oh, the poor thing. That sucks. Best left unknown and well hidden. What would you use that for? I do believe Chester's hat survived the dragon battle. Uncrimped. Uncrimped by dragon fire. You are all very, very brave, and I'm proud of you. You're a hero in my eyes. I'm hoping there's not a uh, secret second phase to this that I'm forgetting. A couple more nice arrows. I wonder if you can actually use the Dragon Slayer Great Bow and one of his special arrows to take down the dragon yourself. I wonder if that's even an option. Probably be very, very difficult to hit a dragon mid-flight, especially with this ranged system. Okay, so I think we only have the magical elevator down to Manus left. Surely this couldn't be a mimic. Surely. Whew. Oh, lovely. That's like the the best upgrade item in the game. I had to scour forever to find one to get this Zweihander all the way up to plus 15. 
So that means I can likely get another piece of my armor up to plus five or whatever the max is. And I'm guessing that's it. That must be it for down here. Couple of souls, couple of arrows, a nice slab. I'll happily take it. Should likely level up again at this point. And then I suppose there's really nothing for it. We should head on down. Try to take care of this uh, DLC section. And then we're on to the Four Kings, I believe. Just have a bit of a hike back up the canyon. I do believe that Chester's duster long coat is uh, quite a bit lighter than what I'm wearing now. So that could be my light set. At some point we will not have massive bosses to fight, and then we can wear whatever we want. That's the beauty of it. It's much like your own life, where you have to fend off the bosses of uh, being bullied for what you wear, but then once you've done that, yeah, wear whatever you like. It's fine. Sure. Some vitality. Sure. See if we can just slip on by to the elevator. Though that might end in raining men, which we don't necessarily want. Not necessarily. All right, here we go. Deeper into Ulasil. I'm not sure if I will need this equipped at some point. I may go ahead and equip it now, just in case. To be able to uh, walk the abyss, lest my mortal legs melt into the darkness and I am reformed as a child of Manus. Well, that's quite a few. Ah, okay. I also did not notice that two of them are sorcerers. I'll need to run back there and take that out first. This is one of those run-to-the-cheap-seats moments. So I am thinking, uh, on, a, on a different track, sometime this weekend it would be fun to play another game, like in its entirety, something shorter of which there are a few possibilities. But I have uh, been wondering, since we're coming to the end of Dark Souls here, we have some other series we are still working on. I'm wondering if there are other things people have been interested in seeing me play. The other one on my list that I do get uh, asked about quite often is Bioshock. Either all of them, or at least infinite, or something, is a possibility. That's not short, but, you know, a new thing to play once we're done with Dark Souls. Trying to see what my options are. So, all of that to say, if you have any suggestions, I would uh, be more than happy. I keep feeling like this little vibration every once in a while, and I'm sure it's just a glitch, like I'm tripping over a rock or something, but I keep thinking like I've been playing too much Red Dead, and I keep thinking that it means there's a collectible item or something. I'm trying to race back here. Ah. 
Those are so powerful. Such powerful spells. Once again, I always forget. Just get your shield out. You fool. Oh, come on. That was behind the pillar. Let's be honest. That was deeply behind the pillar. Okay, so that is a bit of a nightmare to get through here. It's not necessarily easy to skirt past the elevator section. And I'm sure they will respawn every time. Absolutely, the, uh, the play dead set, limbo, and inside are, are the best. The best games I may have played or streamed. And sadly, that is, that is all of them that exist, as far as I know. There are very few other games that reach that kind of quality. So this doesn't look good. This looks like a whole bunch of nope. And I do not have pyromancy equipped. Okay. That's fair. Not even sure what to make of that. Was that the legendary narwhal? I, I don't know. Okay. Ever deeper. Ever darker. There we go. Thank you, message. Okay, good. There is another bonfire. We don't need to get past the sorceresses every time. I was worried. So it really looks like something has broken out from the inside of all of these cells. Of which there are four? Dark. I sense humanity. The chasm of the abyss. Oh my. Yes, there is still that expansion uh, pass, the runaway section of little nightmares that is open to us. I would just need to spend ten dollars or so to grab it, so that's not a big deal at all. That is a very good suggestion. I will keep it in mind. Keep it in the list. Alright, so these aren't items. They're prism stones to mark the path in the darkness. Oh, look at all those red eyes. Hello, gentlemen. And a sorceress. Okay. Still alive. That's all that matters. And not even that, really. Can you gift me games or expansions somehow? I, I don't know. That is very generous and a lovely idea. 
There, there may be some way, but I, I'm sure we could figure it out. And that would be far too kind of you. I should be left spinning to my own devices. And here you are, offering a helping hand. I, I don't know how to take it. Besides gratefully, that's all I know. Oh, wow. Those are the biggest humanity sprites I've ever seen. Those are practically fully formed humans, there is so much humanity. And it's oddly haunting and beautiful, really. This is amazing. Okay, are they aggressive? They appear to be coming for me. Can I even wound them, is the other question. Yes. Okay. If they touch you, they try to integrate with you in a way that is harmful to your physical form. They are likely just trying to say, hey, let me give you a hug. Let me welcome you back into the fold where you belong. But it, uh, it hurts when you're physical. When someone does that. Okay, so I guess it's ranged or nothing. There we go. It's nothing. Stab at thee. So how would I get up there? Ah, it's beautiful! Kill it! I was feeling that buzzing again. I don't know what causes that sometimes. It's a very good thing I have a long reach with this sword. Doing this with, like, a short sword or something would be, ugh. A mace. Dink donk. Okay. So there is something down here. Let's try for it. Before we go the main pillar pathway. Oh, my. Ah. Darn. <laughs> I keep slipping right through him. Spot to farm a little extra humanity, at least. That is huge. Huge and beginning to take more than one hit to kill. Which is no mean feat on a plus 15 spy hander. to whatever that is. Hmm. I 
That must be it. They're intrigued by my top hat. And come in closer to investigate. Oh, and they can come out of the walls. Okay. I should have suspected. Now I have to be paranoid about all the walls. This is a very large area. I was kind of expecting it would lead right into a boss arena right off the bat. What is that? I don't want to kill a little kitty cat. Huh. Maybe that's just if you fall down here? can get past. There's the kitty cat. Hello? Are you nice? Looks exactly like Alvina, the cat in Darkroot Garden. But where is it leading me? I can't help but wonder. close to these guys. Yikes. I imagine as their health increases, so too does their damage, but maybe that's just paranoia. So the cat is leading us to an illusory wall. It may literally be Alvina, actually. I know that she was a protector of the grave of Artorias. So she could be involved in this, and I know she is like a magical being. She could have been alive for it, too. Because that looks an awful lot like a younger Sif to me. Ouch. That hurts. Ah really bad when you can't one-hit them. But their damage, as we wondered earlier, does not seem to have increased. It's still the normal amount. Oh. Dear, dear Sif. I think that means we, we rescued him. Artorius likely was in here. This is likely where he fell, fighting Manus, the, the father of the Abyss. And Sif, of course, would have been with him. And as the battle waged on, or raged on, I'm sure, it uh, would have come to a point where Artorius knew he could not fight any longer. And it appears that he threw his shield to Sif, and may have created that illusory wall himself. And we're going back down to protect Sif. But that Sif then couldn't get out with the humanity surrounding him, so he just sat there hoping for rescue. And then, lo and behold, three hundred years later, you get pulled into the past by the Father of the Abyss and rescue him. That's my head cannon. Lovely. So we're back up here. I'm hoping we can get all the way back down there. Let me just rest at a bonfire to increase my Estus again. And that will be the most useful shortcut of all time, perhaps. I'm guessing this is the closest bonfire. I'm really not sure if the other one would be better. The Sanctuary Bonfire. But this'll be fine, I'm sure. 
And I likely need to repair. It's been a while. Oh, yes, I need to repair. Goodness. Okay. Let's keep going while we're on the, uh, the path... <coughs> excuse me, the path of Manus. Let's keep heading for him. We're getting close, I believe. So it is an incredible shame that you're allowed to rescue Sif. Either before or after you have done his future battle. Pardon me, I'm getting all choked up about it. Ahem. So if I was to now go back, if I had not fought Sif yesterday, if I was to go back now after having rescued him from the humanity and fight Sif, the cutscene changes slightly to be even more emotionally devastating because he recognizes you from the rescue. When we walked in, he was just... Basically saying, nope, here's another bandit trying to get my master's ring, and it will only kill him, so I'm not going to let him have it. And he just attacked me immediately. But if I was to go now, he would wait a second, and he would push me down to the ground, and he kind of sniffs you. And he looks at you like, why? Why are you back? Why are you doing this? And he kind of gives you a chance to leave. He's like, come on, get out of here. And when he knows that you're not going to, he pulls the sword. And it is even worse. So I tried to avoid that yesterday for my own selfishness. And now the last memory I will have of Sif in my timeline is of rescuing his younger incarnation. So I'm assuming we're trying to find that bridge with all the colored prism stones again. I forget exactly where that would be. But I'm also not entirely sure if there's something else up here. I guess there really can't be. But the path to the prism stones is probably easier to get to from over this way. And it will allow me to take out the sorceress every time. That is likely the path that they intend. Me and my top hat descending into the darkness. There's a fog wall. Perhaps we've reached it. That was not very effective. Oh, good. Secret items. A white titanite slab. Fantastic. I forget if that's for divine or lightning or what. It must be lightning. Okay, I think we've cleared it out now. Let's see what waits for us.
there's the hand. That old familiar time hand. And even more red eyes than you could ever have hoped for. This is what resulted from the experiment, the ritual, long, long ago in Ulasil. Oh, yikes. That is a lot of damage. I can't even tell where I am right now in his flurry of blows. Yikes. Okay. Certainly one of the fastest and hardest hitting bosses we have faced. Not to mention the health. I mean, those were normal Zweihander hits. And they were taking about a Drake Sword's worth off of him, it, it seemed. Oh, goodness. So we're headed back to the shortcut. That is a bad dad. Yes. Yes, indeed. There is a very interesting theme that as far as I know, they kind of only introduce in Dark Souls 2. But I've actually been wondering lately if, uh... Gwendolyn may tie into this, this wild theory of mine. Um, in Dark Souls 2, you begin to learn that something that happens in the Cycle of Kingdoms is that a Dark Queen will often arrive and uh, take up a position at the side of a king of the most powerful kingdom in existence, basically. And there's a specific reason for that. The children of the dark, the women in question, feel this constant sort of gnawing paranoia about the world. Perhaps due to the fact that their father is Manus, the father of the Abyss. And they seek out the strongest possible king to basically protect them from Manus, from the darkness. And so it starts off kind of sweet. They, they seek out a king in order to both help the kingdom, protect the kingdom themselves, but also to be behind this shield of strength in a certain sense. But the cycle of doing that causes the strength of the king to slowly fade. It is basically being fed on by the abyss while there is a child of darkness in play. And it's very interesting to kind of track the, the kingdoms and the kings and the queens in question once Dark Souls 2 starts. But there really isn't one in Dark Souls. Gwyn the Lord of Light has children, but he never mentions a mother or a wife in question. And it uh, it kind of makes me wonder if Gwendolyn, the child who was born under the moon sign and could do moon magic, which was traditionally a feminine trait, might be the, the hollowing queen in question. I'm really not sure if if they had that part of it in mind yet back in Dark Souls or not. But it becomes kind of an important part of the cycle that there is always a queen. I could see my soul pile way, way down there. Let's try this again. Try to take a few less hits this time. Necessarily need to, uh, deal with that. I don't think this is going to do anything, but I'm just curious. I'm using his pendant around him. 
for my own curiosity. Pyromancy flame equipped either is the other problem. With this, let me equip that pyromancy flame just to see. I've taken about three, three chunks of his health off each time, which is to say, two, two percent of his health. forget where the pyromancy flame is. It must be further towards the end. There we go. Okay, just in case any of this might help me. I'm not sure if it will. And while I'm sitting there, so sorry, let me run once more to the water closet. I'll be right back with you. Apologies. Getting my microphone back on here. And let me see. The only thing I think that may help us is because we saved Sif from that uh, illusory wall room. If we're human, he may actually be able to help us in this battle, because he did face... Manus long ago and lived, so he may be able to be summoned again. Let me see if I can go ahead and use a humanity here. Oh, calm down down there with your screaming. Let's see here. Just in case. And I'm sure if he starts doing dark magic, at least, that silver pendant could come into play, but the fact that you need it equipped in place of Estus is giving me trouble. I kept trying to heal myself, and I was just doing my little pendant sparkles there. So I don't know if it's worth it to try to switch back and forth between that, uh, thing. At the very least, I could remove some of these other items to make it less of a scroll. So now it would just be a toggle switch. That's something. We'll see if Sif can help. We have a pyromancy flame equipped, and we now have our silver pendant on a toggle. These are my plans. Happy to bring you into the the inner circle there. I'm not 
not sure if that's the right way or if it's just down here. It's just down here. And there we go. I think, as dapper as I'm looking too, I will go in search of extra stamina here with my classic child mask. Give myself as many advantages as I can come up with. So I'm not sure where Sif's summon sign might be, now that I think about it. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Sounds like it's in the arena, like it may be the only... The summon sign can be in a tr can be tricky to spot at first, given that you will be trying to avoid Monus's attacks. So yes, it is inside the arena. I will look inside and hope that we don't die immediately and lose our smooth, plump humanity. Mm -hmm. There it is. Summoning Sif. It's just a constant barrage of attacks that's troublesome. Please sip. Please sip. Oh. I can barely stay alive. Poor wolf. You, s you leave that wolf alone, you meanie. spells. Good for you. Not tremendously effective. Very cool. It hurt. Very cool. I'm really just getting up and sipping every five seconds. It's the only progress I'm making.
Goodbye, Father. Oh, he's gone too quick. I tried to bow at him. Oh, is this dusk? This is where she's been hiding, and that's likely why she was transitioning through time. If she was stuck inside Manus, who has the ability to uh, transcend time, that is likely why we found her in the uh, Darkroot Garden there. It's okay. It's gonna be fine. I know you've seen some things. And and just take as much time as you need to come to terms with it. I don't know what uh what to do to help there. So I do believe that everything you hear, you hear that Artorius, long, long ago, went to Ulysseel and put a stop to the spread of this darkness, that he defeated Manus, the father of the Abyss, though no one, no one outside of here knew that's what he was called. They just thought it was darkness. But uh, he obviously failed, and, and you're the only one that knows that. He failed to stop it. And for some reason, you were brought back in time by Manus, and you stopped it in, in Artorius's stead, and he has been made a legend off of your actions. So I'm really not sure if I'm supposed to give her something. I've got this pendant. Can I... Can I bless you with pendantry? Is that a thing? Do I have, like, a spell of clearing out the mind? Is, is that a thing? Let me look up her, her quest path briefly here. Make sure there's nothing I need to do. So she will not speak to the player. She can be killed by a melee attack. Doing so will remove her from the game entirely and cause the Mushroom Lady Elizabeth to vanish, rendering Dusk's shop inaccessible. So there does not appear to be anything to do. It's just that you've rescued her which was the goal of things, but it, it sure is sad that you just leave her sobbing in the abyss. And you can't even, like, toss her a glass of water or anything? Okay, sure. There's a bonfire. So I'm sure she will be able to escape in the bonfire. I hope she will gather her th herself and do so. And then it'll be fine. In the meantime, let's go talk to Elizabeth. Who seems to be... Uh, Elizabeth, the mushroom lady, seems to be somehow tied to this princess. Dusk. I don't know if she's, like... A, a portion of her consciousness that is still on the outside world, or if she just knows about it, like she used to be a handmaiden or something. I have no clue. But they seem to be somehow connected. And it is sanctuary, okay. So I would likely consider that to be one of the hardest bosses we're ever going to face here. Having beaten him, we're probably good for the rest of the game. The Four Kings, etc. So let's speak to Elizabeth. I have awaited thee. Thou hast rescued Princess Dusk and rid us of that terrible primeval human. Even halting the spread of the abyss, I salute the grandeur of thine enterprise. 
Please allow me to express my gratitude. I thank thee as do we all. I can now stop it again, yes. This is a very good thought. I will remember this is the best way. No one will sing thy praises, but yet thy greatness shall live on. For it shall be my so she's literally saying. to remember all thou hast done for us. She's literally saying she won't tell anybody. She'll attribute it all to Artorius. Because if she told people, then you would... Your own timeline would be messed up, you know? You would be... People would be expecting, When is the time-traveling hero to be born? And, and your whole timeline would be... Off-kilter. So she's just gonna tell everyone that Artorius succeeded, and you get to go back to your own time. Which I think is quite lovely. So we are coming out of the past. <laughs> and I believe we may be able to afford another level up. Let's check it. Get some strength going. Ooh. He looks muscular. I did, very regrettably. You may notice that my Estus is now plus five. I used the soul of the Firekeeper in On Orlando, who uh, I made aggressive. It was all my fault. I am sorry. So we do have quite a bit of nice uh, Estus enforcement at this point. Usually I only get it up to plus three or four, in a single playthrough, because I try not to kill anybody. Firekeepers, especially. But this time I was just too curious about the darkening of On Orlando that I accidentally made her uh, aggressive. So I do believe I'm still wearing the Covenant of Artorius, which is an item useful out here. The new Londo ruins. I just have to skirt past the opening of the city and the subsequent dark raids, and then we should be there. I am still human, too. I should be on the lookout for summon signs or things. Invaders, also. I'm not sure if uh, you got a chance to see it. This may not be the time. <laughs> I did uh, f finally, eventually, get one of their jagged ghost blades, which are cursed passively, like you don't have to activate a transient curse. So there is a dagger I have now that will defeat ghosts even without being cursed. But it's really more the Dark Wraiths that are a problem here. So I think I'm trying to get to that building, if I'm remembering correctly. Which means I need to be, like, up there. So I should likely go through this house. Or church, or whatever it is. Which means I will probably have to fight some ghosts. Oh no. <laughs> Another dark right. And now I don't have a Zweihander. There we go. That's just fine. Now let's take care of the ghosts. If they'll ever come out of the wall to actually face me. Come on, you cowards! I 
not sure why I'm using that downward slash. There we go. So this is a very, very useful dagger. If you can find a jagged ghost blade, which I believe only they drop, I would highly recommend it. I can't remember if we really spoke about the purpose of this place and why it uh, looks the way it is. It does, and why it was flooded. The uh, boss we're about to fight has a, another bequeathed shard of the Lord's soul. The four kings of New Londo were each given a small piece of Gwyn's Lord Soul, um, because they were wise and, and kind rulers. But, of course, as soon as they got the power of the Lord Soul, that all changed, and they became kind of mad. And a primordial serpent, not the one we know in Firelink, not King Seeker Frampt, but a, a different primordial serpent named Darkstalker Koth whispered in the Four Kings' ears about this, this ability that the Lord Soul would allow them to do, called Life Hunt, I think, or Life Drain, where they could actually drain humanity from living people without having to, like, kill them, or you could get more humanity if you killed them. And so essentially this entire town, the entire glistening metropolis of New Londo, was uh, reduced essentially to a trap to gain humanity. And it has something to do with the Abyss. They were corrupted by Manus, the Abyss we just fought, into doing this. Like all the humanity was eventually going to him or something like that. So Gwyn, when he found out that they had effectively betrayed him and were killing his subjects. They used his his power to drain his own subjects of life. He flooded the city. They were too powerful to stop by normal means, so he killed everyone. He sealed the city, and he flooded it, and that's why all the ghosts, you may, may notice, have a bit of a floaty quality to them. They all uh, drowned. And the four kings, too, I must assume, drowned. And I don't know what I was thinking, really, using the fireballs against that guy. I should have just backed up and equipped my Zweihander, because now we have one fireball left against the abyss and uh, nothing else. But oh well. Let's see how this goes. If I had not been wearing the ring, the Covenant of Artorius there, that would have been very bad for me. First king. Hmm. Oh, come on. I really would like to hit you now. Is there something I'm not understanding? Am I just too far away? He's much bigger than I think he is. I think it's the problem. There's a nice explosion. Okay. That didn't go well. Because as the name suggests, there are four of them. And they will keep coming. I think there's like 20 seconds between them. And then another one pops out. We'll just go blow for blow here. No problem. Where's the next one? Where 
noisy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, more telekinesis. We've seen this before. One more. Come on. There we go. Yeah, the fact that there's no flooring is very tricky. I always was expecting to come at them at leg height, but you're standing on their waist height, effectively. So there's the bequeathed shard. So there was a real soul from Nito, and a real soul from the Bed of Chaos, which is what became of the Witch of Isolith. But then both of these, both Seethe and the Four Kings, are just two halves of Gwyn's Lord Soul. So I think that is all of them. Strangely enough, I think we can warp back to Firelink now and open the path to the kiln of the first flame. This is the end. I think we have we have now uh, taken care of all of the bosses except Gwyn. I'm trying to remember if there are any secret bosses I'm forgetting about. I know what I'm forgetting about. Ha <laughs> ha. Let us warp briefly down to Ash Lake. I never did return to fight the Hydra with my Zweihander. I was still using the Fury Sword back then, and that, that is not very effective at uh, getting tentacles above your head. So let's see if the Zweihander is any more effective at doing so. Before we proceed... Always nice to be back down in Ash Lake. These appear to be kind of pale reflections of the arch trees that used to exist in the Age of Dragons. These are like their leftover remnants. Where the dragon, the last remaining everlasting dragon back there, has made his home. I don't know what his backstory is. I love this area. It feels all at once sort of peaceful and serene and yet completely strange and foreign. Something you would never actually see and yet something that seems strangely homey. I'm not sure how they pull pulled it off. So let's see if this goes any better. I also don't think I ever even had any pyromancy equipped back when I was fighting this Hydra, so that may be another thing to try. There, he's finally caught on to me. I'm not sure where I want to be trying to fight him exactly. I've never tried him on this side that I can remember. Let me see if it's possible. That was a crab. Okay. Sure. Yes, come closer, my pretty. Come closer. Daddy wants to stroke you. No, that, that's not what's going to happen.
put your head down, take a little nap, that'll be fine. I really should be doing overhand. Not side to side swings. Ah, darn. Got too close to the edge and slipped off. I don't really like this side. I'm wondering if I can instead run to the other bonfire, reset him, and then fight him near the roots, where there's kind of a lot of nice flat ground. But I'm just making excuses, really, for my poor, poor performance. Let's be honest. I guess that is one more boss. We haven't fought. Um, the, the painted world contains our dear Priscilla. The way it kind of works is as you get closer and closer to the end of the game. So sorry, I forget where I need to go from here. I was going to Ash Lake. I just forgot to... <laughs> I forgot to sink at the other bonfire. That's why I'm confused. Here we go. So as you get closer to the end of the game, the idea is that uh, whatever choice you make, whether you decide to kindle or not, the kiln... the cycle will begin again. You, you will go into New Game Plus mode. And it is though... It is as though you just start all the way over. You get to keep your level and your items, but everyone in the world you may have killed comes back to life. So anyone like Marvelous Chester, who I murdered for his clothing, will uh, spring back into being the moment Gwyn is killed, effectively. And so you can make some decisions before you fight Gwyn as to if you want to go around being a murderous lout and effectively killing everyone for their NPC items, because everyone does have unique gear, typically. So it's kind of a strange part in the game where it becomes less about uh, preserving humanity and more about preserving the uniqueness of your items in another cycle. I don't know why that guy has to die every time, but he does. He just does. I'm going to try to get all the way down the beach to that other tree there, that one, where there's another bonfire out on the sand. I would love to get my souls back if they're still on dry ground. Or even lightly moistened ground. Just ground being the operative word here. Get out of here, you meandering mollusks! Yes, indeed. Nobody has time for that. He has not seemed to catch on to me this time. Not quite as early, at least. Hopefully this will also be a much shorter walk, should I die again. Is another side effect. I didn't have quite so many souls, but eh, who cares? Nobody needs souls anymore. It's the end of the world. And they told us the whole time. It's very important at the end of the, the world what state your soul is in. But here it turns out, no. 
By the time we get down to it, souls are completely meaningless. Come with me into the root structure. Do. Fight with me here in the roots, I beg of thee. Ah, I really need to not be locked on. There's one. Let me have your faces. Let me kiss them gently with my steel. If there was really just any way to actually fight them instead of doing this jack-in-the-box nonsense. I'd be all for it. Maybe I should just be using some spells or something. Everyone's real low on health. I'm just not cutting off many heads. Ah, <laughs> oh, that one I just missed over the top of it. How is that possible? Not sure if that did anything. May have cut off another head, actually. That was too early. There's another. Getting down there. It's getting real low. Oh, come on. Slippery neck. Mm. The shame of it. The crimson shame. <laughs> this is beginning to be a little ridiculous. could have gone for a sideways slash. If only. I'll get lucky here. It'll have to happen eventually. Hmm. Somehow completely missed. But I think that is my problem. I've just been too close to him. They're all up here. Oh, jeez. Really? Is that it? Yes. There we go. Finally took care of the Hydra. So sorry for the uh, length of that. Wink, wink. What? Okay, back to the bonfire now. And then back to Firelink. I was not uh, really expecting to do this well. We are effectively at the end. Ready to face Lord Gwyn now. So, I'm not sure whether we should end it here. 
and come back to fight Lord Gwyn in a final episode. It has been well over two hours. Almost three hours, goodness me, that I've been with you. So perhaps we should call it quits and come back to one big finale. Pardon me. Because there may be a thing or two more I, I need to hunt down. Some NPCs, like Patches, that I could murder, just for the fun of it, before we continue here. So, let me call almost three hours good for now, but hopefully this weekend we will actually see the end of Dark Souls. I am looking forward to it, and I very, very much appreciate your patience here and in, uh, in bearing with me. I will give you a respectful bow, and then I will wave at you. But then let me catch up to the chat here. I see something coming in. Since your accident on Thanksgiving, I'm so, so sorry to hear about that. You have not been very mobile. They, they found some additional breaks in your lower spine and two cracked vertebrae in your neck. And you're going to be housebound for a while longer. I am so, so sorry to hear that. That is a lot to deal with. Too much. And I'm very, very glad to provide any small distraction. Thank you for, for letting me know. I really, really appreciate that you take the time to uh, come along with me on my adventures here. That means so much. I often kind of feel... <laughs> I don't mean to be insensitive in any way. I, I feel your pain in a certain way. I, I have always been relatively physically healthy, but bed-bound in my own way, in my own uh, head, in a specific sense. So I fully understand that feeling of being kind of trapped and isolated from everyone else. I really, really... I'm grateful that you can uh, reach out, and I'm grateful that you're here and have some folks to talk to. And the same for you, dear wolf. Thank you for being here. It really means a lot to me. And I hope we will have more distractions very soon. I may be back around later today, even, if I can find some coffee and groceries. Hang in there, all of you, dear, dear folks. And I love you dearly. The fact that you exist and are part of this dark, dark flame of ours, the dark flame of humanity, is, uh, is near and dear to me. I very much hope we can see each other again soon, and, and thank you. All right. I am going to go hunt down some caffeine. Let me wave at you once more with my Svihander, although it is only an... Eins hand wave, perhaps. Und we will see you next time. Bye for now. I love you dearly. Hang in there.